Hello all, welcome to yet another session on uh, cryptography, network security and cyber law. So in the previous session we had discussed uh, Defi Hellman key exchange algorithm which was uh, used to deduce keys at both communicating ends. In fact actual transmission of the keys did not occur. And uh, But we have seen that Defi Hellman key exchange algorithm has a drawback that it cannot be used for uh, encryption or decryption and also it cannot be used uh, for uh, digital signatures. Now this problem of Defi Hellman uh, was overcome by Elgamil. Elgamil is um, a computer scientist who was able to propose encryption and uh, digital signatures uh, which was uh, rather an extension of Defi Hellman key exchange algorithm. So in this session we will be discussing algamal encryption and algamal signatures. If time permits, we will be discussing other signature schemes that are available. Now, before we start on with the session, we will just have to recall uh, Defi Hellman key exchange algorithm. Now, the objectives um, of this session is uh, at the end of this particular session, a student will be able to discuss the steps that are involved in algamal encryption and also discuss the steps involved in algamal signature. Now, let's try to recall Defi Hellman key exchange algorithm. So, in the Defi Hellman key exchange algorithm, we see that um, uh, Alice and Bob are the two communicating ends who want to communicate with each other securely. Now, in order to achieve this security, both need to have a secret key. Now, we are representing Alice as A and Bob as B. Alice chooses a, a secret key A, which we call as private key of Alice. And using uh, this private key of Alice, Alice will compute his, her public key. Now, in order to compute the public key, uh, Alice will need a generator G and uh, a prime number P. Now, this generator G and prime number P are globally known to everyone or publicly available. Now, the generator G raised to A, that is uh, the private key of Alice, mod the prime number will give Alice her public key. Now, this public key that is computed by Alice will be transmitted to Bob. Now, on receiving this public key from Alice, Bob chooses... Bob chooses to compute his public private key pair. Now, in order to compute his public private key pair, Bob has to choose a private key which is represented using B. Now, using this private key, Bob will compute his public key. Now, this public key can be computed using the equation G raised to A. G is the uh, sorry, G raised to B. G is the generator. B is Bob's private key mod p p represents the prime number now once this public key of bob is computed by bob he will transmit it to alice so alice will receive bob's public key now making use of bob's public key and alice's own private key alice will be able to get the common secret using this equation g raised to ab mod p in order to get the secret key now similarly, on the other end, Bob will use Alice private key and then raise to his own, uh, sorry, Alice public key, raise to his own private key in order to get the secret key. That is uh, computed using G raise to A, B. A is the public, uh, sorry, private key of Alice, B is the private key of Bob. So using this public key, Bob is able to compute the common secret or the secret key which is uh, also calculated at the Alice end. Now in this way both are able to deduce and share the secret key. Now moving further we will see how this concept of Defi Hellman key exchange is used by Algamal in order to achieve encryption. Now in algamal encryption, again it is based on the concept of discrete logarithmic problems and algamal proposed this particular algorithm way back in 1984. 
Now, this algorithm for encryption and decryption has three phases. Now, first phase is the setup phase, setup phase. The second phase is the encryption phase, and the third phase is the decryption phase. In the setup phase, it occurs at Bob's end. Now, what happens in the setup phase is Bob will set up the public private key pair and exchange the public key with the other counterpart that is Alice. Now, this setup phase is performed only once. In the encryption phase, this is occurring at Alice's end. Alice is the person who wants to send a message to Bob and she wants to send this message confidentially. In order to achieve this confidentiality, Alice wants to encrypt the message and send it to Bob. Now to encrypt this message, Alice needs to have a secret key. Now in this encryption phase, we will see how Alice will set up her public private key pair and also we will see how she will deduce a, a shared secret with that of Bob and then perform the encryption. Now once the message is encrypted, Alice sends the encrypted message which we call as cipher text along with Alice public key to Bob. Now once Bob receives the encrypted message or the cipher text from Alice along with the public key from Alice, Bob has to perform the reverse of encryption. The reverse of encryption we call it as decryption. Now to perform this decryption, Al Bob has to calculate the shared secret which is used by Alice in order to encrypt the message. Now Bob will perform first calculation of the shared secret and then will perform the decryption process in order to obtain the plain text from the cipher text received from Alice. Now remember that out of these three phases, that is the setup phase is performed only once at Bob's end. Whereas the encryption phase and the decryption phase are repeated based on the number of messages Alice wants to send to Bob. Now let's look at what's happening in the setup phase in detail. Now this setup phase occurs at Bob's end. Now what is being done in the setup phase is Bob selects a generator alpha which is a part of the cyclic group G which is of order Q. And also Bob will select a prime number P which is as large as 1024 bits. Now using these two uh, parameters now, Alice, now Bob will also select a random number and call that random number as his private key. Now this uh, random number uh, or the private key which is represented using a small letter b is within the range of 2 to p minus 2. p is the prime number p minus 2. Now Bob has to compute his public key which is represented using capital B which is computed in the same way as that of uh, computing in Defi, uh, uh, pub computing public key in Defi Hellman key exchange algorithm. Now over here, what is done is uh, we take the base generator alpha raised to Bob's private key mod p. P is the prime number in order to get Bob's public key b. Now the entire uh, values that is the prime number, the uh, generator, and the uh, actual public key of Bob together contribute to the public key which is transmitted to Alice. The other counterpart of this public key is the private key which is represented using small b which is a random number that is chosen. This is the setup phase which occurs at Bob's end and this uh, setup phase wherein uh, Bob calculates his public private key pair is done only once. Moving further we will see what happens in the encryption phase. In the encryption phase, this occurs at Alice's end. Now over here, in case of encryption phase, Alice wants to encrypt a message and then send it to Bob. Now the message that Alice wants to encrypt, let's represent it using a small letter X. And uh, Bob's uh, public key, which is received from Bob by Alice, is represented using kpub which is having parameters prime number 
generator and the public key of Bob. Now in order to convert this particular plain text into a cipher text, Alice has to first compute her public private key pair. Now first let us see how that is done. Alice chooses a random number, a small a, which is which acts as her private key, which is in the range of 2 to p minus 2. And then using this, she calculates the public key. Now the public key is computed in the same way as that we compute in the public uh, Diffie-Hellman key exchange algorithm. That is alpha raised to a mod p. Alpha is the generator, a is uh, Alice's uh, private key mod p. p is the prime number. Now the public key that is obtained from Alice we represent it use, using ke. Ke stands for ephemeral key. Ephemeral means short lived key. This key keeps on changing as and when Alice wants to send a message to encrypted message to Bob. Now, once Alice has computed her public key, Alice will now compute the shared key. Now, how does Alice compute the shared key? Now, Alice uses Bob's public key B raised to her own private key A mod P. P is the prime number in order to get the shared key K. Now, using the shared key K, which is simple, uh, uh, which is then multiplied with that of the uh, with that of the plain text mod P, uh, and mod is done in order to obtain the plain text. So X into K mod P will give us the cipher text Y. Now, further Alice sends the cipher text along with the Alice. Alice public key KE to Bob. Now over here in the encryption phase, Alice first calculates her public private key pair and public key, uh, uh, public key is represented as KE which is also called as ephemeral key since it is short lived and then A represents the private key. Once public private key pair is calculated, Alice then computes the shared secret key which will be used to encrypt the message which has to be sent to Bob. Now using this shared secret key which is multiplied along with the plain text then performed a mod, 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 mod p over it in order to obtain y that is the cipher text. Now Alice sends the cipher text along with the public key ke of Alice to Bob. Now on receiving this, let us see what happens in the decryption phase. In the decryption phase, which occurs at Bob's end, Bob will receive the ciphertext Y along with Alice public key KE. And then the setup phase gives us, has already given us the public private key pair of Bob. Now Bob what, what he does is he computes the shared secret. Now he computes this shared secret because he wants to decrypt the message that is received from Alice or decrypt the cipher text that is received from Alice. Now what does uh, Bob do? Now Bob will use Alice public key which is represented as KE raised to his own private key mod P which will give the shared secret key K. Now using this shared secret key along with the cipher text, Bob will try to retrieve the plain text x. So y into k inverse mod p will give us the plain text x. Now let us see this entire uh, three step procedure or the three phase procedure with the help of a diagram. Now over here we can see there is Bob's end and Alice's end. Bob is performing key generation. In order to perform key generation, he selects a generator alpha, then he selects a prime number p, and then selects a random number b, which will act as his private key, and then he computes his public key, which is uh, computed using the equation alpha raised to b mod p. Now, having calculated uh, this entire set of keys, Bob will send his public key along with the other parameters. This B is his public key along with the generator and the prime number to Alice. And it is also made publicly available. Now Alice on receiving Bob's public key will first compute her public private key pair and then see 
the message that has to be encrypted in order to encrypt the message she then computes the shared secret key and then performs the encryption now the first step alice does is select a random number a which will act as her private key and then also compute her public key when she computes her public key using alpha raise to a mod p she calls it uh, it is an ephemeral key it is a short lived key now this public key will be shared along with the cipher text now in order to encrypt the plain text x uh, alice will first compute the shared secret now this shared secret key is represented using small letter is uh, using the letter k now this k is computed using bob's private key raised to alice no, sorry bob's public key raised to alice private key mod p now once the shared secret is uh, available or uh, computed uh, by alice she can use that shared secret along with the plain text in order to obtain the cipher text so x multiplied with k mod p will give alice the cipher text y now this cipher text y along with the public key of alice is shared with that of bob now bob will use his private key in order to compute the shared secret now k e stands for ephemeral key that is received from alice raised to bob's private key mod p will give the shared secret for bob now this is the key that is used by alice in order to encrypt now in order to decrypt alice uses the uh, cipher text into uh, inverse of the key mod p in order to get back the original plain text now this is the entire process that is used for encrypting a message and decrypting a message using algamel's approach we have seen that algamel uses uh, 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 the same method that is used by deffy hellman in order to compute the public and private key pair and deduce the secret keys moving further let us have a look uh, let us check a numerical example let's see the uh, generator alpha is uh, given which is 30 the prime number that is selected is 91 and the secret key which is used by bob is 61 and the secret key used by uh, not the secret key it is the private key used by bob is 61 and the private key used by alice is 4 and the plain text which needs to be encrypted is represented as x which is equal to 44 we need to perform algamal encryption and decryption over these particular values now in the setup phase we can see that uh, we have generator alpha which is 30 and the prime number 79 and b is also given to us which is 61 see, uh, which is in the range of 2 to 77 that is uh, 2 to p minus 2 now uh, we need to compute the public key of bob the public key of bob can be calculated using the equation alpha is to b mod p which will give us a value of 59 uh, public key is transmitted to Alice now what are the parameters that are transmitted to Alice it is P that is the prime value that is 79 and alpha that is the generator which is having a value of 30 and B represents uh, what it represents the public key of Bob which is 59 the private key is kept private to Bob so which is 61 which is known only to Bob now in the encryption phase the plain text that needs to be encrypted is x equal to 44 and uh, alice also has access to the bob's public key along with the other parameters p and alpha now alice converts uh, this particular x in uh, plain text x into a cipher text now for converting that into cipher text alice has to have her own public private key pair so private key is already given to us which is a equal to 4 now alice will compute the ephemeral key or the public key of alice which is computed using the equation alpha raise to a mod p alpha is the um, generator a is the private key of alice mod p p is the prime number so 30 raised to 4 mod 79 will give us a value of 13. now moving further we need to calculate the shared secret key k 
Now this shared secret key can be obtained from Bob's public key raised to Alice private key mod P. Bob's public key is 59 which we have calculated previously raised to 4. 4 is uh, Alice private key mod 79. 79 is the prime number which will account us to a value or will, which will give us a value of 25. Now using this shared secret uh, Alice will compute ciphertext from the plain text. Now ciphertext is represented as x which is 44, k is 25, mod p is 79. So 44 into 25 mod 79 will give the value of 73. 73 is the ciphertext that is transmitted along with the public key of Alice. Public key of Alice we have already calculated and the value that is obtained is 13. Now on receiving, Bob has to decrypt this particular ciphertext back to plain text. Now what, what Bob has on uh, his end is his public private key pair which is uh, uh, obtained during the setup phase and also Bob has the uh, information that is the ciphertext Y along with the public key of Alice. The ciphertext Y is uh, represented as 73 and then which is calculated in the previous slide and then 13 is the public key of Alice which is also calculated in previous slides. Now Bob computes the shared secret key because Bob is unaware of the key that is used to encrypt by Alice. So using Alice public key and his own private key K E is Alice public key, B is Bob's uh, private key, Mod P, Alice, uh, Bob, sorry, Bob will compute his shared secret key. Now this shared secret key that Bob computes is 25. Now the key that Alice has deduced, that is the shared key that Alice has deduced is also having a value of 25 and the key, a shared key that Bob deduces is also getting you a value of 25. Now using this key, Bob will convert the ciphertext back to plain text. Now in order to convert the ciphertext back to plain text, Bob will use the equation y into k inverse mod p. y is the ciphertext which uh, is 73 and the key k is 25 and k inverse is 25 inverse mod 79. Now we use extended Euclidean algorithm in order to solve this. Now we have this value 73 into 19 mod 79 which will give us 44. Now 44 is the original plain text which we had encrypted in order to get a ciphertext of 73. Now, uh, now this completes our algamal uh, encryption and decryption. We have seen that uh, the decryption uh, phase is able to get back the original plain text. Uh, now we have seen that algamal encryption has uh, three phases. One is the setup phase which occurs at Bob's end and the other one is the encryption phase which occurs at Alice's end and the third one is the decryption phase. Now what happens in the setup phase is uh, that uh, uh, Bob will set up his public private key pair along with the other parameters that are required that is the generator G and the uh, prime number P. Now this entire public key along with the generator G and the prime number is shared with that of Alice. Alice will first uh, before performing encryption will first compute her uh, public private key pair then compute the shared secret and then perform the encryption using the shared secret key. Now Alice after performing all these three steps will share her cipher text along with the public key to Bob. Now Bob uh, on receiving the information from Alice will perform the decryption. We call this phase as decryption phase wherein Bob will first compute the shared secret uh, key. This is the key that is used by Alice in order to encrypt uh, the message. So first Bob has to compute this shared secret and then use this shared secret uh, inversely in order to compute back uh, the uh, uh, plain text from the cipher text. Now we have seen uh, the steps involved in um, algamal encryption along with the numerical and now we will move further. 
Hmm. Now, now we will start our discussion on algamal signature. Now the question is, why do we need a signature? The signature is uh, used in order to check the authenticity of the message along with the data integrity. By authenticity, we uh, we mean to say that the message has to be received from a genuine source. And also data integrity refers to the fact that the message is not altered during transmission. Now this is why we perform uh, signature. But uh, signatures are not able to achieve confidentiality. Confidentiality is hiding of information. Now, in this uh, subsection or in this uh, uh, rest of the session, we will discuss how algamal uh, procedure or how algamal approach can be used in order to generate a signature and also verify a signature to check the authenticity and also to prove the data integrity of a message. The algamal uh, signature generation process uh, is almost uh, similar uh, to that of the algamal encryption process wherein the key setup phase remains the same. So over here we can see that the key setup phase we call it as the key generation phase which occurs again at the Bob's end and Bob is uh, selecting a generator alpha which is a part of the cyclic group uh, G of order Q and also uh, Bob selects a prime number P which is uh, almost of 1024 bits. Now uh, Bob will compute his, uh, his uh, public private key pair and uh, a private key he selects a random value between 2 to P minus uh, 2 and then computes uh, public key mm -hmm. B uh, which is uh, uh, computed in the same way as we compute the public key in Defi Hellman uh, key exchange algorithm which is alpha raised to B mod P. Now we see that uh, the information that is exchanged with Alice is uh, P, alpha and B that is the prime number, the generator and the public key of Bob. The private key is kept uh, private to uh, Bob itself. Now Bob before sending a message to Alice will have to first generate a signature, append that signature to the message and then send it to Bob. We will see how that is done. Now let's say Bob has to first uh, generate a signature. In order to generate a signature over a message M, message M is uh, uh, over which Bob wants to uh, generate a signature, Bob uses his private key P. Now the output of the signature algorithm are parameters R and S. Now let's see the steps involved in generation of a signature at Bob's end. Now Bob chooses an ephemeral uh, random value or an ephemeral key KE. Now this KE will belong to the range of 0 to P minus 1. Now this ephemeral value KE or the ephemeral key KE is chosen in such a way that the GCD of this key along with that of the P minus 1 that is prime number minus 1 is always 1. Now once we choose an ephemeral key, we move on with computing the signature parameters R and S. Now Bob computes R using the equation alpha raised to KE mod P. The value of alpha is the generator value which is known to Bob. KE is the ephemeral key which uh, Bob has chosen and then mod P. P is also known to Bob. P is the prime value, prime number value. Now using this equation, Bob calculates the value of R. Now then Bob will also calculate the value of S. Now in order, in order to calculate the value of S, Bob uses the message M minus B into R. B is Bob's private key into R. R is calculated previously into the ephemeral key KE inverse of this mod p minus 1. So once r and s are calculated, 
we will see what happens now in this uh, diagram now in this diagram we can see that bob and alice are two communicating parties which want to exchange the message bob has his own private and public key pair now the private key is represented as kpr now bob is uh, calculating a signature uh, uh, signature using the signature algorithm he is calculating the value of r and s we represent this r and s using a single variable s now this uh, along with the message is sent to alice now what does alice have alice has the message the signature value and also alice will have the public key of bob now bob uh, now we'll just have a recap of what process occurs here bob first calculates his public private key pair now once public private key pair is uh, calculated bob wants to sign the message m now this message m can be signed using the signature algorithm now in the signature algorithm we calculate two parameters that is r and s now once these values are calculated using the private key of bob we then append this signature to the message and transmit it to alice now this entire message along with the signature is transmitted to alice and also the public key of bob is also shared with alice now let's see what happens further now on receiving the message along with the signature alice is able to verify the correctness of the message that is the message is not transmit or uh, not um, tampered during the transmission so in order to uh, check that or verify that uh, alice will perform the signature verification by computing the value t now this t can be obtained from bob's public key raised to r r is sent as a signature uh, to alice along with the message into r raised to s r and s are the signature parameters r raised to s mod p if this if the value of t that is obtained by this calculation if it is equal to alpha raised to m mod p then we say that the message received is not tampered otherwise we say that the message received is tampered let us look at whole of this process with an example now before that let's look at this picture over here we have bob and this is alice and uh, there is a public key which is shared between uh, alice and bob this is uh, bob's public key now using bob's public key what is uh, done over here at alice end is alice will first generate the signature and she will check with the signature that is uh, received from bob along with the message if both of them are true in that case the message is simply accepted otherwise alice will reject the message saying that it is tampered during transmission let's look at the whole of the scenario with the help of an example now the public key that is uh, shared by bob to alice includes the parameters p alpha and b let p be 541 alpha be 128 and the public key of bob be 239 the private key of bob is 105 assume that bob bob wants to sign a message which is represented by m equal to 19 95 which is within the range of uh, 0 to p minus 2 now bob needs to choose an ephemeral key such that the gcd of this ephemeral key along with that of p minus 1 equal to 1 let's say ke will give us a value of 31 which will uh, give us a gcd of 1 along with that of p minus 1 now bob first generates a signature now in this signature there are two parameters which bob has to calculate one is r and the other one is s r is calculated using the equation alpha raised to ke mod p alpha is the generator ke is the ephemeral key at the bob's end or the bob's public uh, public key 
mod p or the bob's private key bob's private key mod p so alpha is 128 bob's private key which is represented as ephemeral key is 31 mod 541 will account to us to a value of uh, 280 then bob also calculates s value over the message m which is represented as 95 minus b into r b is bob's uh, key which uh, bob's private key which is 105 into 280 and uh, which whole of which is multiplied using the ephemeral key inverse mod p minus 1 now this value will account us to 65 now whole of this equation can be used uh, uh, can be solved using extended gcd now 31 inverse uh, mod 540 can be uh, simply calculated using a gcd of 31 uh, comma 540 which will uh, give us a value of 1 now let's look at this diagram which will um, uh, help us uh, clearly understand the procedure now bob and alice Uh, bob is having a private key b which is equal to 105 bob has a message that needs to be transmitted to alice and uh, he wants to sign this message which is represented by 95 when he signs the message he gets r and s value which is 280 comma 65 so message along with the signature is sent to bob sorry is sent to alice so over here uh, Alice also has access to Bob's private key. On receiving this information, Alice will have to decrypt the uh, message and verify the authenticity and data integrity of the message. Now, let's see at this uh, slide wherein we need to verify the signature at alice end so alice first computes the value of t using the uh, using the values it has received or uh, received from bob so what uh, b is the uh, bob's uh, public key raised to r r is the parameter of the signature into r raised to s r r and s are again parameters of uh, signature mod p so b is 239 raised to 280 into 280 uh, raised to 65 mod 541 now this will give us a value of 167 now we we will calculate the value t which is equal to alpha raised to m mod p okay alpha is 128 raised to 95 mod 541 will again give us a value of 167 when the value the value that is computed when it is equal to the value that is received then we say that the signature is verifiable and the message is not tampered during transmission and then we accept this message if the t was not equal to the received information or the received a signature in that case we used to say we can say that the message that is received is not appropriate and we simply we can discard the message now this uh, example will give us a clear overview of how signature is generated at bob's end and how this signature can be verified by alice at alice end now, um, now this entire session in this entire session to summarize we have started our discussion on defi helmin key exchange algorithm and we had a recall of the procedure used in defi helmin key exchange algorithm in order to share the secret key then we started on with the encryption process used by algamal approach and we have seen a numerical involved in it and then uh, we discussed the digital signature algorithm using the algamal approach and uh, its verification uh, followed by that we have seen a numerical which will help us uh, get a clear view of digital signature generation and verification at the two communicating ends
थैंक यू